Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Vicky here and today I'm going to create a new art journal layout using this new stamp set by Tim Holtz. This is called Cocktails. I don't know exactly which one I will be using at the moment, but I know that I will be working on my 6x6 disc, disc bound uh, art journal. Now this has um, watercolor paper. I have created this on my own and there is a video where I am creating this as well as a video on each and every page. Depending on the size of my focal point, I like to choose the size of my page and I think these glasses will look great on this 6x6. Now for starting I am going to use this uh, Distress uh, Resist Spray. Now this spray is actually glue and it's going to stick all over the place, so make sure to work inside the box, just like I'm doing here. I'm using one of my favorite stencils, I just love this Moroccan design, and I'm going to spray over it. Notice that I have covered up the rest of the area that I don't want the spray to go there. The spray is transparent so once I remove everything you won't be able to see anything but if you tilt it and catch the light you will be able to see what you have done. I'm going to apply it on the other side and this time I'm going uh, to spray heavily and you will see the different result you get at the end. I left this page on its own and went to the sink to wash my stencil and now I'm back making sure that this uh, resist spray is totally dry. I'm using my heat gun but you can leave it to dry as it is. It's a great way to do the resist technique without using any embossing powder. However, you can even use embossing powder before this dries. You can apply embossing powder, it's going to stick only where the spray is just because it's glue but then of course you will need to heat set it. Now I'm working back inside the box just because I don't want to create a mess all over my table and I'm working with dilution sprays. The colors I'm using are uh, pure sunshine, le fresh lime and uh, vibrant turquoise. I'm going to spray water now because I always like the look, it makes all the colors blend nicely together. And I guess you can already see at the bottom right corner where I have uh, sprayed through the stencil how that uh, area resists all that color. And now I need to dry this. By the way, today I'm working on my new glass mat. This is the Tonic Studios glass mat designed by Tim Holtz. I have been working on a glass mat for about a year now and I absolutely love it. I will never go back to self-healing mats just because the cleaning is super easy. Now, uh, the one I had, the white one, was also by Tonic Studios. This one has uh, some different features. I am planning to make a video just to show you all the differences and the similarities. And now you can see how this looks and how it resists the color on the right bottom corner I sprayed heavily just to see the different result and uh, on the left side it was a light spray. I like both the looks for different things. And now I am going to use a baby wipe and lift some color through the same stencil. So I'm not uh, introducing a, another design. This way I'm keeping everything quite subtle and not so busy at my background. And now I'm going to work on the border of my page. I'm going to apply first Distress Oxide Ink and that's Vintage Photo. And then I'm going to ink up the edges with Black Suit. This is a technique that I always like to do because I like my borders to be darker. And uh, as you darken up the edges, you will see that the center is going to light up somehow. And as I apply my black suit, I will make sure that I don't go as far as I did with my vintage photo. So I'm staying only at the very edge. And hopefully you can see now how this black border creates the illusion that the center is so lightened up. Now I'm going to add some stamping and I'm using uh, stamps from the Etc stamp set. I'm working with uh, brown ink and this is vintage photo, the same ink that I have been uh, working with for the borders. And I can stamp with this all over the place but this is not going to dry on top of uh, the stenciled area. You will be able to lift it or smudge it with your fingers. And that's why I'm going to switch to a brown ink but this time archival ink. So I'm trying to find a very close match. And uh, this is coffee. 
and I'm going to stamp with that over the stencil area and this is going to stamp nicely and stay there. Now I'm going to use a bunch of uh, stamps from this stamp set and I will be working all around the edges to create a black frame so I will be working with black archival ink this time. I'm going to put on some music so you can see everything I did and I'll catch you back once my border is ready. Now my border is ready, I'm quite happy with the outcome, so I will go ahead and do a go-to technique for me. So I'm adding white splashes and black splashes. I'm always working with uh, a very thin brush because I like the splashes to be super fine and um, I always dilute my paint with water. This makes it more runny and uh, the splashes are always fine. As you can see I'm working on the side of my glass mat that has this craft mat and uh, it's really easy to clean, I can see the colors easily and I find this uh, really helpful, in, uh, especially in mixed media. Here is a close-up look of my background, totally in love with it, so let's move on to create my focal point. Now for that I'm using mixed media paper by Ranger. It's a paper that takes uh, any type of uh, paint beautifully and that's why I usually choose to go with this paper for my focal points. I'm stamping with black archival ink and comes in a big or in a small size. It is my go-to ink when I want to stamp something that is not going to smudge or smear. Absolutely favorite and that's why I have it in two sizes. I'm using my stamping platform because I want to stamp uh, a couple of times just to get a nice and crisp image. And the good thing of working on uh, an art journal that you can take out the pages is this, that I can take the page, put it inside my stamping platform and make sure that whatever I stamp is going to give a great impression. I don't like to have perfect impressions when I'm working on the background since it doesn't really matter, but for the focal points I think it's a must. And also working with the archival link at uh, this stage makes sure that this is going to stamp both on top of the dilutions as well as on top of the resist spray. Perfect impression. One more time just to get a crispier image. I am planning to color and cut out this cocktail grass separately and then stick it on top. However, in this stamp there are lots of details around the main glass and that's why I wanted to have all those details on my background. Now I'm going to bring in uh, this uh, paper and I'm going to color it. I wanted to show you today that you don't really need to have the big brass markers or all the other fancy things that I have. You can work with watercolor and you can get uh, pretty much beautiful results. I'm not going to even grab any watercolors. I'm just going to use the sprays that I used in the beginning for my background. So just work with whatever you have. All mediums can give you beautiful results as long as you know how to use them. So as you can see at the right of my glass mat there is this uh, little palette which is white and helps me look at the colors better. I'm going to add just a drop of uh, these uh, dilution sprays and you can work with any watercolor that you probably have. I am using my pipettes because they are easy to clean, they are easy to pick up color but you can use uh, just a brush if you don't have pipettes. They are really inexpensive, I am going to leave uh, links down below to everything I am using. Now as I am coloring I am not going to do any video editing, I just put on some music again and you can see how I color and you will see the names of each color I am using on your screen every time. Now on the stamp it says this is Bloody Mary so I am going to follow the correct colors for my drink. So let's start.
And of course, don't forget that you can do coloring with your Distress inks. Here I'm using the Moss ink from uh, the Distress uh, Oxide inks just to add some shadow on my olives and my celery there. And my glass is ready. I'm going to use my heat gun just to make sure that everything is nice and dry before I touch it. Now, just because everything is in the details, I'm going to add some uh, water. I'm just touching the tip there with water. This is going to reactivate the dilutions paint underneath. And when I'm going to blot it with paper, it's going to lift the color and create these droplets on my glass. Now I'm going to fuzzy cut this uh, cocktail. And for that, I'm going to use the mini snippets by Tim Holtz. And I'm going to share a tip I learned recently from Tim. One side of these scissors is serrated, which means that when you cut out, the edge is not super smooth. You can feel it with your finger, but you can't see it on camera. If you turn the scissors the other side and start cutting, you will see that you will get a smooth and straight line. So this is the side that I am using now. And a good thing about having serrated scissors is that they stay sharp every time, because as you open and close them, they get sharpened. I'm inking the edges very lightly just to add those uh, vintage photo touches on my cutout. And as I place it on top of my background, I can tell that if I add a little bit of vintage photo underneath and coming outside of the image, it's going to help the image lately when I stick it on top to stand out even better. Before I stick my cocktail down, I need to ground it somehow, so I'm going to play with these design tapes by Tim Holtz. These come in a set and I like that they give you different designs in the same set with uh, different widths. And um, I'm actually going to play with uh, two sets here. So the one I'm using now is called um, Vintage and I'm also going to play with a couple uh, of uh, tapes from the travel set. Now, in some areas, I'm adding some uh, white glue just to make sure that these are not going to peel off as the time passes. And you can see here that in some areas I used my mini attacher just because I like to have those uh, metal details on my pages and at the same time they keep uh, the um, tape where it should be. Time to stick down my cocktail. Very carefully I'm applying matte medium at the back and I'm going to place it on top of my background making sure that I don't touch matte medium anywhere since uh, it will react with the inks I used and I don't want to make a mess. I'm going to add some shadow around my image. I will use my Distress Crayon and this is of course vintage photo since I have been using it all over the place. I'm going to apply it it is so soft that you can smudge it with your finger or you can go with water and a brush which is going to lighten it up and blend it nicely with the background. Now I have these flashcards by Tim Holtz. I've been having them for a while now and uh, never used them. So I just remembered I have them and I knew that there was the word relax somewhere in there. And this is what I will be using for my page. And I couldn't make it work as it was and with my page. So I'm going to manipulate it and make it work for me. I'm going to cut it to size. I'm also going to ink up the edges. And along with the word relax, I'm going to use a couple of stickers. Uh, one says paradise found and the other one says life is good. And I'm going to secure the word relax with my mini attacher. And my page is pretty much ready. I'm going to add some finishing touches. So I'm adding uh, some uh, piece of this uh, design tape on top and at the bottom of the word relax, which are details that bring everything together, all the elements. And I'm also going to do some stamping. I use just parts of the stamp. Notice that I'm using the stamp as a design element to add texture and details. And um, I don't really care if it is upside down. This is just a design element and it's not supposed to be readable. More final touches. I'm adding some droplets with glossy accents over my glass just to make it look more fresh. And finally, I'm going to use my white gel pen to add some highlights. 
and my page is ready. I had really fun creating it. I'm now going to put it back to my book. And before I go, I want to show you some new metal rings that I got. I have shared them on my Instagram account and I got many questions about them. These are metal discs and uh, they feel really nice and sturdy, not like the plastic ones. They come in different colors. I absolutely love them. I got them from Amazon and uh, I'm going to leave a link down below if you want to check them out. So I decided to go with uh, these golden ones and I will be using those on my 6x6 finished pages. And that was my page for today using really fun techniques. I hope you had fun, that you got inspired. Don't forget to leave me a comment. Here are some close-up photos on the project that I made today. You will find the full list of all the supplies that I used down below in the description area as well as on my blog. Thank you all so much for watching and have a lovely day.